What's up guys, I'm Rissom from RossmurTech.com and this is another tutorial on Swift programming. Now in this class I'm going to talk about closures, so let's get started. Now what are closures? Well, closures are self-contained blocks of functionality that can be passed around and used in your code. Closures in Swift are similar to blocks in C and Objective-C. Now there are three types of closures in Swift. The first type is called global functions. I did a video on functions a couple of videos ago. If you guys are interested, just check that video out. Global functions are closures that have a name and do not capture any value. Now the second type is called nested functions. Now I also did a video on nested functions a couple videos ago. And nested functions are closures that have a name and can capture value from their enclosing function. And the third type and the type I'm going to show you in this video are called closure expressions. Closure expressions are unnamed closures written in a lightweight syntax that can capture values from the surrounding contact. And uh, we're going to start off this video by typing in a function, a simple function. And uh, again, a function is a sort of uh, closure. So to create a function, we type in fun, c, func is the keyword, short for function. We give our function a name and then we add this open close parentheses. We call that function red. Our function's not gonna have any input parameters or any return value. So we're gonna hit space and add this open and closing curly brace. In between the open and closing curly brace, we're gonna hit enter a few times. Now this is the structure of a function. This is a simple function. And whenever we invoke this function, we want it to print something out on the screen. And we want it to print out hello. So we're gonna use this P-R-I-N-T-L-N keyword, open and close parentheses. Inside the open and close parentheses, we're gonna add a set of double quotes Inside a set of double quotes, we're going to type in hello. All right, so this is a simple function with no parameters or any return value. And whenever it's invoked, it's going to print out hello. So how do we invoke a function? We type in the function name, which is red, then add this open and close parentheses. So if we had any input parameters, we would add them inside this open and close parentheses. But our function has none. So whenever the program gets to this line of code, it's going to jump to our function and do whatever's inside this open and closing curly brace. Anything with a open and closing curly brace is considered a closure. So once I hit play here, it should print that hello. Build succeeded and it printed out hello. Now let's just comment this out here so we can use it as a reference to comment something out. Again, you just add two forward slashes. Any line of code that you want to comment out, you add two forward slashes in front of it and it would comment out that entire line. Uh, it's good programming practice to comment out blocks of code that are not working. Instead of deleting the code, you can comment it out and you can uh, work on it later on. Or comment something out that you're working on and you haven't finished. Uh, instead of uh, rewriting it over again and interfering with the code, you comment it out. It won't interfere with the code and you can refer to it later on. So it's good programming practice to comment out lines of code. So now how do we create a closure expression. We start off by declaring a variable, right? And we're going to use the VAR keyword. VAR declares a variable and we're going to call our variable red. We're going to add this uh, colon. Then we're going to hit space. Then I'm going to add this open and close parentheses. Then I'm going to hit space again. Hyphen, greater than symbol, space, open and closing parentheses, space, open closing curly brace. Now this is not an open and closing parentheses. This is a open and closing curly brace. Now inside the open and closing curly braces where we're going to hit enter and this is the structure of a closure here. Notice it looks similar to a function. So if you guys have created functions, this almost looks identical, but instead of a function, this is a variable. Now I forgot one thing here. I forgot to add the equal symbol after this uh, closing parentheses here. So after this closing parentheses here, hit space, add this equal symbol because this is a variable and variables have to be equal to something, right? So again, our variable, we, we called red and we added this colon and hit, we hit space. We added this open closing parentheses. Inside this open and closing parentheses is where we would put the input parameters, just like our function. This variable is not going to have any input parameters. And, uh, or sorry, this variable, it's not a function. This variable is not going to have any input parameters. So I'm going to leave it blank. Uh, we hit space. We add this hyphen and greater than symbol. This tells the program that we're returning a data type or ret returning a value. And after this here is the data type we want to return. Uh, you would put int 
string or whatever data type you want to return here. Since I'm not returning any data type, I added this open closing parentheses. This omits that. It tells the program that we're not returning anything. So we added this equal symbol because it is a variable. We have to set it equal to something and we're setting it equal to this open and closing curly brace. This open and closing curly brace is basically the closure itself. So we set our variable equal to this closure itself. We would set the parameters here and the return data type here as well. Now, inside this open closing curly brace is where we're going to add the statement. So whenever this variable is invoked, just like a function, it's going to do what's ever inside this open and closing curly brace. So we wanted to print that hello as well. So let's just copy the code here. So we don't have to retype it. Oops. Copy it here. Paste it here. So now, whenever the function is invoked, it's going to uh, print out hello, and I have to add this closing parentheses here. So whenever this variable is invoked, it's going to print out hello. So how do we invoke this uh, closure here, or this variable, the same way like we would a function? We type in the name of the variable in this open and closing, I'm sorry, I hit the caps lock here. We type in the name of the variable and open and closing uh, parentheses here. This invokes the variable, just like the function. So once I hit play here, it should print out hello. Build succeeded, and it printed out hello down here. Now, there are other ways we can write this, and let's comment this one out as well. Let's comment this one out, this line here, so we can use them as reference. All right, so this is the other way we could write this. We could declare a variable, right? We could call our variable red, add a colon after a variable name, hit space, add this open and closing curly brace, hit space, add this hyphen greater than symbol, hit space. Then uh, we are going to type in int, because we want it to return an int, right? So our, our return value is going to have an integer data type. And that's pretty much it. Here we, we would add the parameters. We want two parameters, and they're going to be ints as well, right? So we're going to add a comma because we're going to add a second one here. So int. So we declared a variable. We call a variable red. We said our variable red is going to have two parameters. They're going to be integer data types. And we're going to return a value of int. So down here, we can say um, red is equal to open closing curly brace, right? It's equal to enclosure. Then inside the open closing curly brace, we're going to put the cursor and hit enter a few times. So now inside this open closing curly brace here, we're going to type in two input parameters or the variables for our two input parameters. I'm going to say A and B. So A would go to this first one and B would go to this one. And they're going to be integer data types. Now we're going to hit space, hyphen, greater than symbol, hit space. Now we're going to tell it what uh, our data type of our return value is going to be. It's going to be an int as well. And uh, we're going to hit space here after our data type. And we're going to use this keyword in. This keyword in basically tells the program that it should start the statements now in the body. And we're finished with this here, and it should start the statement. So anything after the in is going to be considered a statement. So we're going to use a return statement. So we're going to type in R-E-T-U-R-N because it's going to return some values, right? So we're going to say return A plus B. So basically, whenever this variable uh, is invoked, it's going to ask for two input parameters, right? And we're going to give it those two input parameters, right? It's going to add those two input parameters and return it back. All right, so that's pretty much it here. This is the other way to write this here. We started off by declaring a variable. We added the colon, hit space, open, close, curly brace. We said our variable is going to have two input parameters, and these are the data types of our input parameters. They're going to be both ints or integers. And uh, after uh, this closing parentheses here, we added the hyphen and greater than symbol here. This tells the program that our variable is going to return a value. And this is the data type it's going to return. It's going to return whatever we add after that here. In this case, it's going to return a value with the integer data type. So we said red equals this open and closing curly brace. Again, basically open closing curly brace equals closure. So inside the open closing curly brace, we said we gave it the input parameters. We said a is the first one and B is the second one. So A is like a placeholder. It's just a variable. So whenever we input uh, those parameters, we give it the values, it's going to store it in A and B. So we, we gave it those two input parameters here. And uh, we gave it a return value of int. 
what we're going to return back to the user a value with the integer data type. So after that here is the in keyword in just again tells the program we're finished with the parameters we're finished telling the program uh, what data type we're going to return and now we want to start the statements and our statement down here is going to return a plus b back to the user so whatever we input is going to return a plus b back to the user so that's pretty much it for this video if you guys like this video please give me a like if you want more videos like this please subscribe to my channel i'm rissing from rossmartech.com and thanks for watching